Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video, we're gonna be making block eight, which is our sawtooth star block. And since we have made flying geese previously, this is gonna be a breeze for you because we're just gonna be making flying geese, adding squares, and turning it into a beautiful star. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our videos. Let's get started. So first, we're gonna download our free pattern and look at the cutting. From our green, we're gonna cut one six and a half inch square, which is our fabric A, from our yellow, we're gonna cut four three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, and that will be fabric B. From our aqua, we will make eight three and a half inch squares, which is our fabric C. And from our red, we're gonna make four three and a half inch squares from our D. So let's get cutting. So we're gonna first start with our green fabric and we need to cut a six and a half inch square. So our ruler is already six and a half inches. So you can just cut one side, set this aside, and then you're just gonna rotate. The ruler is already six and a half, so you just put that right on the edge and trim. And then we're going to turn that and line up the line here to make sure you're square. Trim and rotate, and you're gonna have a six and a half inch square. And here, what I like to do is line up the left and one of the lines at the top, and I've got a six and a half inch square. I'm gonna label that with an alpha bitty and put that on our design board. So that is our green fabric. From our yellow fabric, we need to cut four three and a half by six and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. So we can get four three and a half inch cuts across the width, because three and a half times four is less than 20 inches, and across the fat quarter is 20 inches. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, we're gonna cut two layers at a time to save time. So I'm gonna do a straightening edge And then I'm gonna rotate my fabrics without moving anything. We're gonna cut six and a half inches, which is really easy since the ruler is six and a half inches wide. Cut. Rotate again. Line up the line on the top. Cut. Rotate and we're gonna cut three and a half inches twice. And again, I'm gonna line up the left and the top. Cut. And that gives us four rectangles. We're gonna label that with our alpha bitties as fabric B. Put that on our design board. So from our aqua, we need eight three and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna make a straightening cut. And then I'm gonna cut a three and a half inch strip. lining up on the three and a half. Cut one more time at three and a half inches. And now we're gonna subcut these into eight squares. So I'm gonna cut them one at a time. So I'm going to make a straightening cut. Now 
Make sure you get all your salvage off. And then we're gonna cut four times on each strip at the three and a half inch mark. And again, when you're cutting, you're gonna line up the top and the left. And just take your time. So that's our first square. Second square. Third square. Fourth square. And we can actually get one more. I'm surprised. So we're going to do one more on this strip. And that is going to give you five. And we need three more. Just set these aside on this strip. Just do a straightening cut, making sure to get all of my selvage off, all of the little dots on the selvage off. And we just need to cut three more three and a half inch squares. Once, twice, and you always want to measure twice, cut once. So you just line it up, you can save this for later, and we have eight three and a half inch squares. We're going to label this as C. From this fabric, we're gonna cut four three and a half inch squares. So I'm just gonna pick a side, do a straightening cut, rotate, I'm gonna cut a three and a half inch strip first. We're gonna cut the same way we did before. We're gonna to try to get four out of this and see if we get four. One. Then I'm really lining up. Two. three. Oops, we were able to get four. That's awesome. So we don't have to make another cut. So these are our four fabric D's. We put them on our design board. And now we can start assembling. The first step in your pattern is to make flying geese. Take your fabric C squares and draw a line on the wrong side. Since we're working with solids, there isn't a right and wrong side. I'm using a friction pin. It will disappear with heat later. It's my favorite marking tool, but there are a lot of marking tools on the market and you can just find whatever works best for you. I'm going to draw a line on the wrong side of all eight of these squares. Now once we have all of these marked, we're gonna take our fabric B rectangles and we are going to put a square on the bottom right, bottom left, and we're gonna pin. I'm gonna go ahead and pin twice. That way when you get to your sewing machine, it's on there. You wanna make sure when you're sewing that you don't accidentally have it crooked because if you have it sewn like this and then you flip out, you're, gonna, you're not gonna have a 45 degree angle at this side. So pinning is really important to keep this fabric nice and in place. 
and we're going to go to the sewing machine, use an open toe foot, and we're gonna stitch directly on that line, not to the left, not to the right, just directly right on that line with a 2.0 stitch length. So let's go to the sewing machine. I'm starting with the leader fabric. And then there's two ways you can sew from the rectangle side or the point. For a beginner, I would always start on the rectangle side so that when you start, your fabric doesn't crunch up. So I'm gonna sew from this side. Again, you're making sure that your fabric right here is at a 45 degree angle and perfectly lined up. with an ender. Cut my pieces and we are gonna go iron. So now that we have this part sewn together, we're going to use a line on our Creative Grits ruler and cut a quarter inch away from your sewn line. It doesn't have to be exactly a quarter inch but if it's too large, you're gonna have little seams sticking out. So I do try to cut mine a quarter inch away. And now we are gonna go press these. So now I'm going to just set my seam on each of these. That gets my seam really nice and flat. And then I'm going to press toward the blue, the aqua. So I like to finger press and then press nice and flat. And then we're gonna go back to our design board and we're gonna add the other side to our flying geese. So when you add it, you want your points to match. And if, you're, if you ever have a question, you can just flip it over and make sure it looks right. So that looks right. But if you had it this way and you flipped it over, oops, that's not right. Or if you flip it this way, that's not right. So as a beginner, you can, if you ever have a question on it, you can just kind of flip it and then you can see if it's going the right direction. So again, I'm going to add these and pin on each side, making sure that these fabrics are lined up right on the edge with a 45 degree angle. So again, I can like peek. Yep, that works. And then when we get to our sewing machine, we're just gonna stitch directly on that line, just like we did before. And we will have four flying geese. So 
let's go to our sewing machine. So again, when we're starting, you can start from this end or this end, but as a beginner, it's better to start on the long rectangular side, stitch directly on that line. And just keep going. And I'm looking at this one and I can see that I'm not lined up exactly right here. So I'm gonna reposition before I start. apart and we are gonna go cut and press so now we're gonna trim a quarter inch away from the line we just stitched on and you could technically stack them and cut but I would not recommend that as a beginner um, I have cut some too close before so I would just do one at a time and then we are going to go press. So we're going to press the same way, set our seams nice and flat, using a little bit of steam, and then I'm going to finger press toward the aqua, nice and flat, press. Nice and flat, use the edge of your iron, and when you're pressing, you're kind of moving the iron from one side to the other rather than pressing down. So you'll see that I'm on one side of my triangle and then move to the other side. So we've got those nice and flat and we're gonna bring our design board and we can go ahead and build our block. We're gonna put our center and then we're going to put our outside squares and I'm just following my pattern. And then we're gonna lay our flying geese. And when you put them in, your point goes to the center. So that's an easy way to remember point in the center. Point in the center and point in the center. And so to make this really easy, we're gonna work on chain piecing. So we're gonna stitch all the way down this line first. So I'm going to put my fabrics right sides together on all three. And then I'm going to pin. And when I'm pinning, I'm going to make sure these 45 degree are exactly lined up and I'm going to chain piece these all together. And I'm going to make sure they're all Pin the sides, and on this one, I'm going to put a pin in the center. And this makes it nice and easy. You just go straight to your sewing machine, and we're just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam all the way down. So we've changed our foot to a quarter inch foot, and we're going to stitch all the way down without stopping. Do a couple stitches in between. And 
and our last one. We're gonna cut this apart, but before we go to the ironing board, I'm gonna look and see if this point is correct. And it looks like I chopped a little bit of it off stitching. And I don't like that. So I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna show you how you can fix it. You're gonna take a sharp seam ripper. You can look at it on this side. And we're going to just pull some stitches out from here to here. So to do that, I'm gonna, on one side, cut a few of the stitches on one side all the way, just every couple of stitches. Turn it over and you can put your seam ripper on one side and the other side and you should be able to pull these stitches right out. So they came right out. Just get all the little stitches off. And then we're going to just repin and we're going to start stitching from the side where you can see the seam. Cover the previous stitches. I'm just going to pull this down a tad. And just keep stitching. And when I was stitching, I could see the point right in there. So I stitched a little bit up. So now I have a nice point. So you can see that I chained piece all of these together. So they're still together. I'm going to move to my ironing board. We're going to be pressing toward the squares, but first I'm going to set the seam. And then I'll press to the red squares first. So you can see I'm moving the iron from before the seam to after the seam. If you put your iron flat on there, it might give you a duck plate. Now this one I'm gonna finger press toward the green. And there we go. Now we're gonna put this back on our design board. So we're gonna put this back on our design board. I'm gonna go ahead and clip my seams right here. And I'm gonna put these, the last row, right sides together. And we're gonna pin and then sew the very last seam to put the rows together. And we're gonna go stitch down just like we just did. I'm just gonna pull straight from my design board. Keep stitching and this time the seam is on top so you can watch it. It needs to be moved over a little bit, but you can watch as you get your needle right there to see if you meet the seam. So right to that seam, and keep going.
check that seam again. And this time it lined up so we can go press. So we have all our pieces chained together and we're gonna again press toward the squares. Set your seam. Finger press. Finger press toward the green. And you can see on the back that our seams are going to nest because the seams go opposing directions. And that's what seam nesting means. So we're going to put this back on our design board. And I'm going to leave the stitches in place. You don't have to clip them apart. Now we're going to put the top row down. We're going to put this seam where it nests. And we're gonna pin right in that intersection. We're gonna make sure this seam nests. You can feel it lock in place. Pin. Pin at each intersection, at, pin at each end, the left and the right making sure they're at a 45 degree. And then we're gonna pin once in the center here. We'll flip this around. Do the same thing on the other side. And since there's plenty of space between them, you can do these at the same time at the sewing machine to save time. If your seams were closer, you wouldn't be able to do that, but they're plenty far apart. So again, those seams nested and you can just really feel it lock. So you can really see that seam nest. And then we're gonna go sew and when we're sewing, we can sew with the flying geese points on top so that when you're sewing to them, you can see that you, you stitch right to that point. So we're just gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam. Pull it out when you get there. When you get to this point, you can see the point right there. You're gonna stitch right to it. Go ahead and do the other side, and then we'll check our points. So again, you're going to sew right to that point. So we're going to make sure this point lines up, this one and this one, and this one, and we just make sure they line up. This one's a tad off, so I might fix that. To fix that, do the same thing, you just pull your stitches out.
and that's probably why my seams didn't match because something happened over here where my fabrics got a little thicker or somehow didn't lay flat, lie flat. So. So I'm gonna get that flat. I'm gonna finger press that again. Put a pin in and we're gonna stitch right over. I'm gonna actually start right on that intersection. Stitch over previous stitches a couple times. Make sure it looks good and then go back the other direction. Sewing over previous stitches. And now we can go press. So now we're gonna set our seam. We're gonna press toward the outside. And here you just wanna make sure when you're pressing you don't press over here on accident. So you're just going to go right down, do the other side. And your seams can be a little hot, so don't burn yourself. And now we're gonna just trim the little slivers off the edge. So now I'm just gonna take my ruler and I like to clean up the edges of my blocks when I'm finished. You don't have to do this. I just personally like to do this just to get the little slivers off. And you wanna make sure you're not going into your seam. So you wouldn't cut here because if you cut here, you would be cutting into your quarter inch seam. So we're not doing that. I'm just really getting the edges off or the threads off, I would say. So you're just cutting a tiny bit off. You don't have to do this step. I just personally like to do this. And once we're done, I'm gonna look and see what my block measures. And it measures 12 and 3 eighths. So it doesn't measure exactly 12 and a half, it's 12 and 3 eighths, and that's okay. My blocks never come out exactly 12 and a half. They're all, because I'm using the same seam allowance, they're all gonna come out about 12 and a half, and that's totally fine. Even if it's 12 and a quarter, it'll be fine when you get to finishing. I hope you've enjoyed making the sawtooth block. Join me next week for block nine, and if you've missed any of the previous videos, check out our description box. See you next week.